Hey folks, it's Nate. It's time I got back to the drawing board and today we're going to look at the second of the free comic books I picked up last week on free comic book day. I guess it's technically two weeks ago, more like 10 days. Anyways, uh, yeah, it took me a while to get to this, but kind of busy last week. Anyways, the point is, uh, this is the second book and the first one was an introduction to a new series uh, that was being given away by SourcePoint Press, but this is an kind of an introduction to an ongoing series, quite an old ongoing series. And as you can see, it's The Tick. Now, I had no familiarity with The Tick at all. When I picked this up, I never watched the TV show or the Amazon Prime show or read any of the comics before. I know a lot of people like it. Um, my impression of it was always that it was just, I don't know, absurdist humor. I can take it in small doses, but it seems to be all The Tick is. At least that was my impression. And um, reading it, you know, seems a little different, but uh, let's go over it uh, point by point. There are basically three stories in here. Um, it begins with this one, uh, The Meatloaf Menagerie, which is an okay story about The Tick. Uh, he kind of... They make an odd decision here. They pick up right where the previous year's Free Comic Book Day comic left off. And my impression has always been that on Free Comic Book Day, the comic books they give away are kind of meant as an introduction to try and draw in new readers. They're not so much meant for the hardcore collector. And having an ongoing story through your Free Comic Book Day books almost makes them seem like they're a separate thing that you should be collecting. I'm n I don't know if I like that. Um, now, here they do kind of show you an overview of all the previous ones, so you can kind of um, work out what has been missed. Uh, and, you know, they have this whole big thing here about they've done it um, twice a year for the last, uh, or excuse me, they, they've done it yearly for the last nine years. Um, there have been 18 free comic book days total, so that's, uh, that's my mistake. Um, so they skipped one year out of the last 10. Um, but, uh, and yeah, our, their first one was a reprint of the of tick number one. That's right. Okay, I knew that was in there somewhere. Um, so, you know, but otherwise they've decided to have this ongoing thing. I don't know if I really like that. The story stands on its own pretty well. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of the obsessed villain who collects tokens from heroes and I mean, it's okay. Um, it kind of pokes some some fun at fans. You know, it doesn't seem mean spirited. Um, but I don't, I don't know. They have this big uh, comic book grader knockoff kind of a thing, and they grade the villains. They give them a low grade. Okay. Um, it has some some funny moments. Uh, there's a lot of dialogue. Um, not a lot of action here. Uh, but they do really play up the meatloaf, so they, they almost play up introducing the meatloaf when they go to have dinner with these villains as, as if it was an action scene. That's kind of funny, I guess. Um, I don't know, I didn't like this story very much. Uh, then they have a one page, which is uh, kind of funny about the tick. He does laundry and he throws himself in, um, and, and Arthur's pants get turned blue because the tick's suit is blue. I, I didn't really like this one either. Um, but I did really enjoy this last one. Uh, and it, it starts off, you think it's going to be kind of a Jurassic Park knockoff. And it, it turns into, I don't know, dances with wolves. Like he falls out and then he lives with the wolves or coyotes, I guess, and he can talk with them. And then it turns out the coyotes forest is being logged by evil loggers. So it becomes an environmental thing. And then they call him the dog catcher and he's this giant guy with an axe for a head and I know the whole thing is very silly but I actually laughed at this one I enjoyed the jokes it had a good sense of comedic timing it has this thing about the take with his internal monologue and it disappears um, so I kind of enjoyed that uh, and it was it was an okay story um, and they kind of wrap it all up at the end and they put a nice bow on it and um, it's funny it's got a ton of action it's got a lot of absurdity and uh, you can tell right away by reading it whether you're going to like the tick in general or not. I'm pretty sure that the tick in general is just not my cup of tea. But having read this, you know, I, it didn't cost me anything. I got a, got a good sense of who the character is. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So I think as a, as a promotional material, 
it's decent. But again, it does have this these eight other issues of backstory. I'm a completionist. I'll admit it. Uh, I don't get in in the middle of a lot of franchises because I know I'm just going to want to go back and try and you know get caught up on everything, and it's just going to eat at me until I do it. So I don't. Uh, it's better not to go down that rabbit hole, at least for me. Um, so I think this is a, a pretty good uh, take on a promotional comic for a long-running series. I mean, it does give you a sense of what the take looks like in the middle of his adventures with uh, the Meatloaf Menagerie and then uh, this in Borneo Bor Reborn uh, is, is a really good take on, you know, the, the franchise in general. I probably would have put this story first and then done the ongoing so you kind of more ease your way into it. You get to know the tick uh, a little bit on his own before you throw this weird cast of characters in and have them suck up a lot of the time because just reading the tick by himself was really entertaining. I did like this. I liked his monologue. I liked um, the, the weird use of some onomatopoeias and, and the way he talks with people. And there's just not as much of that in the first story because there's so many other characters. And he's got two villains. He's got Artie. He's got a couple of his friends from around town. Um, so it's, uh, it's a bit more of a mess. And it really feels like I need more of an investment in the character to really appreciate it. Um, so I, I don't think I like this as much as Hope Number 1. But I think it does its job pretty well. Uh, and that's what I think of uh, Free Comic Book Day's The Tick. Volume 9, I guess. Number 9. It doesn't really have numbers on it. Anyways, uh, those are my thoughts on that. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, there's a like and a subscribe button down below. Use them as you see fit. And I'll talk to you later.